There you go. So this is the last week of looking at poetry. Um, so we looked at short form. So we looked at like shorter poems, um, like haikus and sonnets and um, acrostics and stuff like that. And we also looked at longer form poems. So the ballads, um, the epic poems and the, um, I can't remember what the other one's called. That's another one. Um, and like free verse. Um, and sort of the differences between, like from what I can gather from what we've discussed and the last like couple of weeks is that um, with short form stuff, um, the, the, the rules and the structure is, is like it's more strict around sort of how long it is and like how many lines there is in the rhyming and like the sort of general structure of it. Whereas when we were looking at long, longer ones last week, I kind of felt like it was the topic and actually that you can kind of write them how you want when they're long poems, but for certain styles, there's a very specific thing that you write about. Um, so like the epic poem, this is the one that I tried to have a go at um, and I didn't get very far, I've got like a verse and a half. Um, but the idea that I wanted to try and do was take one of these longer uh, styles. So I was kind of thinking like free verse style, but like in epic form. So um, it sort of says that they're normally about heroes or adventures. So I went for hero. Um, so like, I don't know if I've ever written about a hero. No. And I like the idea um, of like having very different subjects to try and write something about. Um, and I think my aim was kind of, um, ex was gonna be exploring everything that's gone on at the moment and sort of um, the heroes that are our frontline workers and the NHS and carers um, and how, kind of like how this is the job they always do, um, but because of the, pandemic and sort of everything that's happened it's become even more vital cleaners are even more vital all these people that for so often have been sort of looked down on i think for their jobs or whatever or the do the really difficult jobs i think that yeah people that uh, work for the nhs people that work for care homes or people that clean or um even customer service i think at the moment it's becoming like i'm um, really important to people um often we belittle their jobs and I sort of liked the idea of trying to talk about how they're heroes but at the moment you can't tell that that's what it's about <laughs> um so it's much it's quite a bit of imagery in it but I quite like where it's going but what I'll probably do is wait till I finish it before I yeah. write it did you how did you did you ever get writing any longer ones yeah, yeah. well I went for like three bars mm -hmm. um and just sort of Bizarrely, on quite a similar subject than you. Oh. Or lockdown based. And yeah. what people are doing in lockdown. And all based it on, I read loads and loads, and everywhere they seem to be as dramatic in their wording of subjects as possible. And like putting as much emotion behind what you're writing. So yeah. Really hard to not overcomplicate necessarily, but. Make every make sure every single line hit pretty hard. Yeah. In depressing, depressing format. Well, I, got, <laughs> I got two little verses. Yeah. So, uh, um, cool. So hopefully I'll finish it soon. Nice. So yeah, you kind of sound like you had a very similar experience than than I did. Yeah. How would you compare it? for you um for writing lyrics is it quite a similar experience or is it quite different um i found this this more similar to writing lyrics than last week and with the short stuff because mm. of just the size and the space you have to do it yeah but my lyrics are quite long and poetry rambly anyway <laughs> so for some people that's probably not the case yeah um it helps that I, I can write a four minute verse in a song, get away with it. 
Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. I think I probably feel quite the same, actually. Um, that this is, it feels similar to writing lyrics, although admittedly, I don't think I do this enough when I write lyrics. I think lyrics are always at the bottom of the pile of a song. Um, so I will often spend a lot of time on the music and the melody of the vocal and like the harmony of it all and the rhythms and stuff of the music, but I don't spend enough time on what I'm saying. Um, and I think it's because you do that thing where you go, oh, it needs to be like something really special. And then the wall goes up and you're like, oh, I'll just see what happens. Yeah. Like, whatever comes out first, that will be fine. Um, so I think the main thing that I've learned is that it is really important actually to take the time to sit down and work out what it is you want to say. And I personally, I mean, a lot of people might find this the opposite, but I find having certain restrictions, restrictions isn't really the right word um, because they're, they're not, it's not like you can't do whatever you want, but having like boundaries, I think yeah. to what I'm writing has really helped. Um, so like this hero thing this week, there are so I, I'm not the greatest wordsmith in the world. So having sort of like, well, what am I trying to say? Like, um, and using poetry as this kind of like inspiration has really been really interesting for me. Yeah. Um, there's also something that Kerry sent me, um, which I haven't had a chance to look at. I was just about to look at it. Um, but this, uh, what, what, from what I can understand, it's someone that's used the sort of the idea of universal human rights. Um, and I think is probably looking at some kind of le some of the legal documentation around that, and has used that for inspiration for a piece of music. Okay. And that sounded really interesting to me, um, and it got me thinking of like, so we've been using for, for like looking at poetry specifically, but actually any form of documentation that happens could be an inspiration for lyrics. Yeah. Um, this is just probably the closest, because um, there, there's some crossovers between poetry and lyrics, I think, which is why. Um, so, you sort of touched on a little bit about how for you shorter poems felt a bit more like a different experience. Is there anything that you think from that? So obviously writing longer poems for you is sort of similar to writing lyrics. Yeah. So is there anything that you could take from the shorter poetry writing and sort of use that to inspire your lyric writing? Uh, I, it's, it's like the rhyme structures and the way that they can do two line little a b poems and you can put middle like midline rhymes in and thinking that happen to think that cleverly about the structure of what you're doing inside a small mm -hmm. thing. if you could apply that the whole way through a song i think it'd be unbelievable to have that mm. sort of i think guy garvey is pretty much the only guy i can think of that comes close to doing that yeah this guy Garvey is um Elbow, is. Elbow isn't he? Yeah. Mm. I like Elbow. I love Elbow. But his lyrics are phenomenal and just mm. long and sometimes the rhyme hits three quarters away for a bar and then he just keeps on going yeah. with more words and but he yeah. wrote it in that way and I've never done that before. And mm. it's been writing since then. Going could I make this more interesting? Could I? Yeah. Put some sort of rhythmic structure into this that can change it. Absolutely. I think it's been, that's been. Yeah. I feel like, um, especially with rhyme rhyming, we have like these expectations about where, um, rhymes need to sit and, um, it can be really interesting to sort of, change where we're expecting things to land um and i think yeah. also finding the thing that i think elbow do really well or guy garvey does really well is finding phrases that um aren't particularly like you wouldn't think that it would sound nice in a song but it does um like the one about yeah. um can't remember what the song's called, but it's about Rocket and it's like, 
build a rocket boy. That one. But like build a rocket boy is a oh, really yeah. interesting phrase. But it sounds, but it's such a good song. And like, it, that's what makes it. And like the lyrics are a really big part of that. Um, and I think being a musician where the lyrics are something that stick in people's mind because they're just very interesting and unique, it's really difficult. Um, yeah, and I really, I, I personally feel like, even though it's only been three weeks of looking at poetry, it's, um, it has sort of opened my mind up a little bit to um, find new ways of writing lyrics, which I think is really useful. Um, I think learning how to lyric write is, I don't, I don't know how easy that is. I think we have words, we all have our own words that we want to say, and it's about how we structure them and how we, I think we can learn structures, we can learn new words, we can learn the tools, but like actually where we put them and what order they're in is completely up to us. Um, so it's been really interesting for me. Um, yeah, definitely. Have you got any like final thoughts on sort of poetry in general or the last uh, few weeks? Uh, not massively profound things. Um, I'm just Said everything how people do it. Like I can't imagine mm -hmm. writing books and books of poetry. Like, yeah, you write an album and you feel like you're a champion. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> look at me, I've got 11 songs, and then someone releases 170 poems. It's yeah, like, oh, okay, I'll, I'll be quiet now. Yeah, well, I think it's because it, our brains are doing hundreds of different things at once, sort of with the music, especially, and yeah, and harmony. And um, I think it's interesting because when your mind is solely on the words, it's a very different experience. Yeah, massively. Um, so um, for what would be great to sort of see, and this might be um, that we both have a go at this separately and then film film versions of it that we can attach onto the end of one of these videos. Um, but so I'd quite like to try and use these poems that we've worked on. Um, I'm gonna try and use both of them in some way, um, although I'm not, I'm not sure how because they're about very different things, but I'm um, to use them in a song, um, yeah. try adding melody to it or whatever and see how it sounds. Um, and then, yeah, even if it's just like, it doesn't have to be a whole song, but just... Well, even um, this morning, I was playing, picked up my guitar, just found a little jam round, found a little mm. riff, I like, started singing something that I didn't know what it was and realised it was my little poem from last week. Oh, amazing. Ah, oh, that's crept in my head. I can I can say it off the top of my head an hour ago, and now I'm out of the word by accident. Mm. So I, yeah, I'm well, I'm going to hear that. Yeah, I'm definitely going to put that into a tune. And then. Cool. Yeah. Um. Yes. Yeah, so we'll both have a go at that in our own time. Um. And then from next week, um, we're going to take the words away from the song and look purely at the music and the instrumental part um, by sort of exploring classical music and this I'm really excited for because I remember studying it before in school and I quite enjoyed studying it even though it's not music that I listen to a lot even though I think I should because I always enjoy it um, yeah. but and classical is a very broad there's a lot of sub-genres of classical music um, different eras and time um, and they have their own rules and like the, the structures of their stuff is so different to pop music but also so similar in a lot of ways they're just longer yeah. um, so it's gonna i what i'm really keen to do is sort of really examine the what makes classical music classical music in terms of looking at general structure of like yeah. aba or whatever it is and then um looking at how for like really long pieces how they structure it and how you could possibly do that with maybe more commercial music or something with more commercial instruments i think that'd be really interesting yeah sort of looking at like um i don't know if it's symphonies or the ones that it's like they're about an hour long and there are like four main sections but within each of those sections there are other sections and how i think it could be really interesting to look at those kind of structures but also 
um, how they structure melodies, how they structure harmony, how um, they voice things, etc. Um, so we're kind of looking at, into that um, from next week. That'd be awesome. So that'd be exciting. Cool. Well, I'm going to stop the recording. Don't bother, bun.